stop worshiping your brain, it is less remarkable than you think. We are actually taught in school in a very similar way that AI models are trained. There's a big thing missing there in terms of his understanding of where innovation really comes from. These models don't actually understand anything. We got a lot of comments on our last video. You could say that. Yeah, and I mean, these were really thoughtful too. Um, and I think there was a lot of great insights, also some critique. Definitely excited about getting into these and, and sharing our thoughts as well. Yeah, so I think for those of you who didn't watch our previous podcast, um, for a quick overview, we covered how IQ tests don't measure for creative, general, or emotional intelligence and how these are just really bad measures of one, human ability, but also in terms of comparing how AIs might um, perform compared to humans and also like it has AI reach general intelligence, right? Yeah. Comment. So I, okay. I broke these up into a few pieces because these are actually pretty long comments. So this is just the first part of the first comment. I cannot agree with you that AI is fundamentally different from human intelligence. You say AI just repeats what's in its data, but take a look at humans. They do exactly the same. We need to spend years in school, and best schools tell that they try to teach not some facts, they try to teach how to learn. If we weren't that intelligent, we wouldn't need schools at all. You can get facts on the internet or in a library, and you don't need to be taught to learn if you're intelligent, right? Great point. Humans do learn before school. In history, we didn't have school. Yeah. <laughs> and people learn. People learn best through experiences and application, and, and application things that are relevant. Maybe to their we lives. can take a little step back in terms of just h explaining the models high level. Yeah. Um, because basically these models have, if you imagine the Wequa logo, which is except with billions or millions of nodes, which this is probably like the, the Wequa logo is probably like the simplest neural net. But basically this at a, at a huge scale. Um, and you have two components. You have the goal function and you have the training data. So the goal function is basically what is this model trying to achieve? And then you apply the training data to try to get closer and closer to the goal function to increase performance towards that goal function. And so this is limited by two factors, which is one, the human defined goal function, and then interpolation and extrapolation within that data. Yeah. So that's just kind of a high level understanding of how these models work. Um, but I would say, you see, because one thing that the commenter said is that, okay, humans also repeat what's in their, what's in their data. And I would say like, there, there's something to be said in the sense that like, we need some information to work with to be creative. Like if somebody creates a creative book, for example, like they were using the pre-existing framework of language, right? But that doesn't mean that we're just interpolating and extrapolating like these AI models. They are purely processing this data, right? Yeah. It's not understanding anything. It doesn't have any concept in its mind, mm -hmm. right? We do. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you have, like when you think of a tree, you are not picturing a very specific tree with all of the specific details, right? Mm -hmm. You have a concept of tree in your mind. Yeah. And then you can recognize it in other places because you've got that generalized concept. With, with AI, you've got to feed it all of these different pictures of trees. Well, so it could recognize a tree in future pictures. Yeah. So one thing that was interesting is that the commenter brought up school. I'm actually glad he brought it up in that way because we are actually taught in school in a very similar way that AI models are trained, that mm -hmm. these neural networks learn. With school, it's like it's like Pavlov's dogs. Mm -hmm. It's it's just this conditioning of wrong, right, wrong, right, wrong, right. <laughs> and eventually you're going to learn to get the right answers more. Yeah, that's what grades are for. It's like good model, I mean student. <laughs> <laughs> good model. Yeah. And good student. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um and and that's how that's how the these models are taught. But I think, but also that just shows how schools are so much of a contrived environment. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's t schools are teaching kids in the same way that AI models, but that's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good thing because yeah. we actually 
We learn best from experiences where we can take a concept in our mind, right?、Mm -hmm. And we learn best from applying knowledge. That's why you see, you know, Sir Ken Robinson's TED Talk on "Do Schools Kill Creativity?" Is、yeah. because this is not how you foster creativity. That's not how you foster creativity, and that's why you see a lot of these innovators struggling in school,、mm -hmm. like、um, Henry Ford. <laughs> Albert Einstein,、uh, Steve Jobs, and Thomas Edison. Like I could、yeah. keep going on and on about all of these different innovators because the way that that school is structured and the way that you teach AI models that doesn't foster creativity. Yeah. Um, so I think we can move on to the next part of this comment. Every innovation can be reduced to three processes: a trial and error, b accident, c analogy or transfer of knowledge between fields. Nothing of that is hard to achieve with current models. So I would say that I'm just going to give some examples of innovation that happened that don't fit into these three categories. Uh huh. Um. So one is the assembly line. Created by Henry Ford, yeah. Where this was not this was not a trial and error process, nor was it an accident, and it was no there was no transfer of knowledge between fields. It was just thinking like, okay, we could have one person do con construct a car by themselves and have to learn every single part of that construction process, or we could just have one person do each step of the production process. One one、yeah. person do another person do the yeah, next step,、yeah. and so, just have a line of people、yeah. putting it together. Not the end, you get a car. So another is Einstein's theory of relativity. Which this is probably like one of a big like a very pure example、yeah. of this. I think he was on a train or something and was literally just thinking like, "Hey, what if I was traveling alongside a beam of light? Like, what would that be like?" <laughs> and he just think it up that in his head, <laughs> trying and, to tackle the, the the mysteries of the world. Yeah, and that's just you know he was just literally just imagining what that would be like. Yeah.、Um, another example is.、Um, How blockchain was created, you know, there this was no trial and error process, nor accident, nor there was there's really no precedent for that as well. Which is it's just kind of,、um, you know, the creator was thinking about like, okay, how how can we have some kind of you know decentralized、um, system that where nobody is in control, and, this, and that's how that was created,、um, and then also、Ooh. abstract art. To be honest, I don't really understand <laughs> abstract art, but this was not something that had any precedent or trial someone, and error. Someone someone imagined it up、yeah. and and put it to life. I mean, to me, I'm sorry for all those people who love abstract art and appreciate it, <laughs> but it seems like it could be an accident. But it it was something that people that they imagined、mm -hmm. and just decided to create. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with a lot of art, you can see. Oh, it's it's a picture of a pot. Mm -hmm. Right, you just you take some stuff and you try and replicate it, right?、Yeah. But with abstract art, it's abstract. You're not taking exact replicas from reality. Yeah, and so so one thing that the book *Sapiens* talks about by Yuval Noah Harari is the cognitive revolution, which happened around seventy thousand years ago, where humans gained the ability to imagine.、Um, and and you can see like this is the reason why. Humans rose to the top of the food chain and dominated the entire planet, is because we had this ability to imagine. But I think that a big part of what Yuval misses in his book、um, and in recent talks that he's given around AI and AGI is that he says that the the main reason why this innovation comes about is is just because. Well, one humans were able to collaborate across thousands and millions of people, and that we were all able to believe these myths and these fictions and imagined things. If you look at any major human achievement, it is always based on large-scale cooperation. It's never the work of a single genius or of like a group of ten friends. You always need thousands and millions of people cooperating together. But it's like okay, we can believe these things, but somebody had to create it. Somebody、Someone、had to had think to it up in the first the place. Create the thing that we believe. Yeah, exactly. And it's also he he says like, oh well, there's there that all innovation didn't just come from one person or ten people. It all came from thousands or millions of people working together. But it's like you had Einstein sitting on a train. 
thinking up theory of relativity yeah. because he had this ability to imagine that that did not come from millions of people like i right. think that there's a big thing missing there in terms of his understanding of where innovation really comes from um and i think that that's like you know no no fault on yuval here like it is difficult to know where innovation comes from because like the human brain is still something we're trying to understand it's something that people have been have been wondering yeah. it's like where where does this come from is yeah. do we have ideas or do <laughs> ideas have us are yeah. they living beings a yeah. whole lot of theories yeah this is something we're still trying to understand but i do think that there is a, a big missing piece in terms of his understanding of like what really makes us unique it's it's creative intelligent not in, intelligence which did enable us to work in you know as thousands or millions of people but that's not really where innovation initially spawned um so okay so this is the last part of this comment is you think we are smarter but we have one advantage for now multimodality we use simulators for sound pictures motion etc which these models don't have access to if someone had only a text interface to the world without sensory experience would they understand the world that's our advantage for now our five senses not our brain stop worshiping your brain it is less remarkable than you think i would say that that this is that this is missing a lot because well one Okay, we, sure, we can we can taste, we can touch, we can smell, we can see. That's I'm all very grateful wonderful. for yes. all that. Yeah, and that's great, you know, but but it's really about how do we actually interpret that? Um, because, you know, we, we are, we're able to see things and we're able to understand on a conceptual and abstract level what it is that we're seeing. And with models, that's not the case because, you know, we've trained um, AI models to be able to identify and also create like pictures and videos. Um, you know, ChatGPT can, ChatGPT4 can do both text and, and image generation. Um, and that doesn't actually allow it to understand the meaning. Um, John Serlet, he came up with the, the Chinese room thought experiment in uh -huh. the 1980s, essentially showing how, why machines don't actually understand what they're doing. And, and he made, drew this important distinction that AI, that AI understands syntax, the symbols, and it can see the correlations across all these symbols, but it doesn't actually understand the semantics or the meaning behind it. I don't, I don't think you can compare an AI to a human who just has access to um, a text, mm -hmm. a text interface, right? Mm -hmm. I think that there's so much that's fundamentally different because it's a huge neural net with mm -hmm. how many... I think ChatGPT3 has 175 billion parameters. Billion yeah. parameters. We don't even know how many ChatGPT4 has. That's ChatGPT3. Yeah. Okay. You're taking all that. That's why it can speak. That's that's why it can it can it can fool people into thinking it understands and it can have concepts of yeah. things. I mean, I think it's like reason, imagination, creation, and abstraction go way beyond just sensory input. Yeah. Right. It's like that that it that really has nothing to do with just how we have this multimodality. It doesn't have a concept of anything. Yeah. And so I think that to the to the point like oh stop worshiping your brain it's less remarkable than you think. I would say like the human brain is the most complicated <laughs> thing that we know of in the universe. And that's that's really something, you know. And yeah. and I I I think that you know we should not blindly worship it. But I don't think worship's the right yeah, word. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think we're worshiping our brains, but I think that we have a, a reasonable ad admiration for the fact that we can can do what we can do. Like you and have not, to, in and, order to yeah. train an AI to recognize a cat, you have to feed it millions of cat photos. Whereas we can just see a cat, or maybe we haven't even seen a cat before and someone described it like, oh, it has whiskers. It's kind of like a dog. Except, except it has it's got pointy, pointy ears, ears, you know, and it, it does this sound called meow. And, <laughs> and like, you don't even have to see it before. And then when you first saw a cat, you'd be like, oh, I think that's a cat. That's a cat, you know, yeah. Like, AI can't do that, you know, and we, and we, like, humans have 86 billion neurons, which is, like, half as many parameters as ChatGPT3 has, yet we can do so much and, and, and adapt to so many different situations with 
this, you know, wet wear, whatever's going on up there, uh -huh. um, which I think is pretty remarkable. We don't want to underestimate our brain. We <laughs> want to understand it. Exactly. It's not the same thing as worshipping it, but mm -hmm. I do think it is to be admired. Yes. Thank All you, right. brain. <laughs> so, next comment. This is a different comment, so we're just taking it. Oh, pieces. boy. Okay. I think I would have to push back on the bow and arrow example of general intelligence a bit. Mm. There were a lot of very intuitive steps that led up to that. Throwing rocks and sticks was likely something we did before we walked upright. Spears for a couple hundred thousand years. Throwing spears after that. The atlatl well predated bows, which is like something that you put on a spear so you can throw it. Ah, I see. Um, the bow might not have been such a leap from snares utilizing saplings as springs. Point being, each of these was a small incremental step on the way to the bow with pretty large gulfs of time between them it is likely that someone saw one of them and wondered if it was a solution to a problem they had um so i would push back on this because i i still think like sure there was the concept of throwing pointy things before <laughs> that and having it fly through the air at a long distance yeah but there was still a conceptual leap that had to happen for the bow that required somebody to imagine it before they created it there's there's a pretty big difference between throwing something <laughs> And then pulling, pulling back yeah, on something. Yeah, it's a completely different, like, locomotive function to that's, be That's pulling. what it looks like. Yeah. To, to <laughs> yes. Shoot a bone yeah, arrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, somebody still had to imagine what that would be before it was yeah. built. Um, even, you know, even though there are some parallels conceptually between what was there before. The next point in this comment is, in this, an LLM's performance would probably be similar, but it lacks the ability to ask itself, what if? But it's likely that part can be supplied by another LLM with very specific training one really important thing is that that comes with uh, that that is important for innovation is being able to ignore precedent <laughs> um and so ai can't ignore data but humans can and you might think like oh yay <laughs> we can ignore information well yeah yay because you want to like for the Wright brothers, they were ignoring all of the precedent and the evidence that showed that humans could not fly, yeah. right? And now we have airplanes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and that's an important part of innovation is, is ignoring the precedent and taking your own route. Mm -hmm. AI can, cannot ignore data. And that's how data. you could start to think of what if. I have to push back on on that you can train a neural network to ask itself what if <laughs> so far everything we I mean, have learned add, about you it you can train it to ask itself what if in the ways that humans already have asked what if yeah or a that's combination true that's and an true interpolation of how all humans have asked what if before to quote aristotle it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it yeah and and schools also like degrade our ability to entertain an idea without accepting it that's true because that's true. it's like your your teacher tells you something and you're just supposed to accept it you're supposed to try your best to memorize it nothing helps you get better grades the the, the act of asking what if oh are you right about that teacher yeah. that's, that doesn't help you get better grades the the point is to take that as true yeah memorize it put it in a test and i think that this really just says how much we really need to rethink education in terms of actually preparing humans for having creative intelligence and having what AI doesn't have. Like we are trying to, we, we are making people more like machines through our education system and that's not a good thing. That's the opposite nope. direction we should be <laughs> going in yeah. given yeah. this future and given what these models are increasingly being able to do in terms of replacing the jobs that don't require creative intelligence um and so we have a lot to get through i know we only got through two comments during but this video but we will keep sharing our thoughts and responding to these awesome comments yeah. thank you for the critique yeah so um, stay tuned for part three where there's three more comments that we want to cover um and so yeah really excited for that <laughs>